Hey guys, in today's video, we are going to look at how much different YouTubers made talking about the stimulus. As a starting point, this is not meant to call people out. This is more to encourage some of you guys to start your own channels. Ad revenue is down for certain topics and also people might be dealing with things in their other lives, in their other jobs. So this is to help with that. The stimulus is also something I've talked about on my own channel. So it would be pretty hypocritical of me to throw shade at people. We're going to break this down into three different parts. We're going to look at how much they made and how we figured out those numbers, which is going to be part number one. Number two is going to be how and why you should get started, especially once you see some of these numbers. And then number three is going to be some challenges and obstacles that some of these channels are going to face moving forward. With that said, though, Ask Sebi made $2,300 to $3,700 talking about the stimulus. Austin made $3,300 to $5,200. Mark Kohler made between $4,200 and $6,600. One, one cute couponer made between $5,300 and $8,500. Credit Shifu is also in the same range and made between $5,800 and $9,300. Erica Kohlberg made between $7,800 and $12,000. So we're breaking into the $10,000 plus range. Blind to Billionaire made between $10,000 and $17,000. Andre Jeek, Jek, I can never pronounce his last name. Is it Jack or Jeek? Andre, which has a gigantic channel, made between $12,000 and $20,000 talking about the stimulus. And this is actually a relatively small number, especially when we talk about his channel specifically. Matthew Perry made between $13,000 and $21,000. Brian Jung between $15,000 and $24,000. Point Pointers made between $19,000 and $31,000. Travel Explorer Click is in the same exact zone, so $20,000 to $32,000. Morris Invest, $24,000 to $38,000. According to Vin and also Graham Stephan, made between $25,000 and $40,000. And this gets pretty interesting with Graham, which we'll dive into a bit more detail later on. Weiss flies between $26,000 and $42,000. Max Mahir between $29,000 and $46,000. Logan Alec between $31,000 and $49,000. And the final one in the small range is going to be Devin Carroll, which made between $33,000 and $53,000. Moving up one level, we have Mr. Gardner, who made between $56,000 and $89,000, talking about the stimulus. Miss Morgan, between $70,000 and $112,000. Lastly, we have Meet Kevin and Clear Value Tax. Clear Value Tax made between $126,000 and $200,000, talking about the stimulus. There is something weird with the Clear Value Tax numbers, and we'll talk about that a bit more when we get to that middle bit in the video. Unlike the other ones, there are some assumptions we're making here just because some of the videos were deleted. Finally, we have Me Kevin, who made between $128,000 and $203,000 talking about the stimulus. As a reminder, this is based off YouTube income, and we'll talk about how we got to these numbers. But if you like the fact that we actually went through the numbers first, instead of making you wait 10 minutes for them, feel free to give this a thumbs up. And if you are someone who's about to leave, just because I do expect a few people to leave, consider subscribing if you do want a behind the scenes look at YouTube and how a lot of these numbers work out. In future videos, we'll probably talk about stuff like private jets and how influencers use this in order to sell more products and also stuff like t-shirts and how the sales and economics of that work. So cool, we have all of these numbers, but firstly, are they legit? And secondly, how do we get these numbers? So it pretty much breaks down into three components. It's going to be number of views, number of stimulus related views, and then the CPM. CPM is going to be the cost per thousand views that YouTube ends up making. So if you have a $10 CPM and you get 1,000 views, then that video earned $10. 10,000 views, that's going to be about $100. And then 100,000 views, where a lot of these videos end up getting to, that's going to be about $1,000. With this though, YouTube does end up taking a cut because they are the platform. So they take a 45% cut. So the creator ends up getting 55%. So when we look at those numbers again, it's about $5, $55, and $555. So the way I figured out all of this was pretty much going to each of these channels, the ones that get recommended due to the stimulus check, and then copy pasting all their information from their first major stimulus video. I'm pretty sure like a lot of you guys, when you get bored, when you can't sleep, you end up analyzing publicly available data for fun, or maybe I'm just a weirdo. We're pretty much looking at the first big stimulus video onwards to see how many stimulus videos they had and also how successful these videos and their other videos have done. We did some basic Excel formulas to transform the numbers to make sure that they're more comparable and easy to read. And then we also did some other stuff to make sure that we're pulling the right information. 
So initially we were only pulling the word stimulus, but then afterwards we noticed that a lot of people used other words such as the IRS portal in order to also do stimulus videos. So that is kind of interesting. For example, if we look at Ask Sebi, we can see which of these are stimulus related and which ones are not. So the formula is stimulus related views times 55%, which is what the creator is getting, and then the CPM. CPM, we had two public numbers. One is going to be from Mandy's channel, where she ended up sharing how much a small channel can make doing stuff like this, which I think is a pretty good index and mark to go after, and that's about $8. On the top end is going to be Kevin's number, which is about $12, and we do get a bit more specific in the actual formulas. One thing to be careful with here is that that's actually not the ceiling, so that is going to be for his video that did very well that was on number one trending, and in reality, the number might be a bit higher. And that's going to be true for all of these other creators. We kind of have a window, but it's not exact. Side note, I did end up talking to a bunch of these creators before doing this video, firstly to make sure I was okay, and then secondly to see if the numbers were actually in the right range. It seems like they were fine and the numbers were relatively close, so pretty good thing. So with all of this, we do have a lot of interesting information and we will cover some of this towards the latter bit about some recommendations and challenges for these channels. Another interesting one is going to be Graham and I think a lot of people watching this are probably going to be interested as well. So for Graham, he had 27 videos since his first major stimulus video and 12 of them are going to be stimulus related, so only 44%. Interestingly though, only 37% of his views are from stimulus videos, despite having 44% as those type of videos. So arguably, it means that his non-stimulus videos, his other ones, actually do better. So about 480,000 compared to 630,000. So if we take the total number of views from stimulus videos times 55%, which is going to be his cut, and then we look at the lower and the higher CPM range, we get $25,000 to $40,000 which is pretty awesome for sharing the news and also his opinion and take on the situation. If you look at another channel like When Cute Couponer, she's done 44 videos since her first stimulus one and nine of them are stimulus ones, so about 20%. About 54% of her views came from these videos compared to our other stuff. This to me is a pretty good thing and it means that even when this ends, even when we move on to something else, she still has that steady base that's interested in what she's talking about. I'm not going to go through every single one of these because it's going to be way too long and you guys are probably going to get bored, but let's go to Andre, mostly because I want to clickbait this and put him in the cover picture. I'm sorry, Andre, please don't Wingardium Leviosa me. Is he a Harry Potter fan? I don't know. I'm going to stop with the jokes while I'm still ahead. So Andre has six stimulus videos of 11 and that accounts for 2.8 million views. Running through the math, that's going to be between $12,000 and $20,000. That's obviously not chump change by any means, but a lot of creators do want to have multiple revenue streams because you don't want to be stuck with YouTube in case something crazy happens. So for example, Andre has a Patreon where he gets about $20,000 every single month. We'll also cover other revenue streams in future videos if that is something that's interesting. Moving on to Meet Kevin, 66% of his videos are going to be stimulus related at 28.9 million views. To me, this shows a crazy work ethic because all of these videos are very well researched, similar to everyone else, but he does it multiple times a day. From this, if we run the numbers, we're looking at $128,000 to $203,000. The big elephant in the room is going to be clear value tax, and this one is a bit interesting, like I mentioned before, just because when I was running the numbers for this, it felt a bit short. When I looked at it on a day-by-day -day basis, I noticed a lot of gaps in the videos that I thought were there. So there were weeks worth of videos that were just deleted, so it is a bit harder to get this number. And then going back into my history, so the videos that I did watch from him, when I tried to access them again, it said that they were privated. Trying a few more, you can see pretty much exactly the same thing. A lot of these videos were privated. That actually makes a lot of sense because when I was checking my work and when I was pretty much auditing myself, I noticed that there was a lot of red over on Social Blade, and that typically means that either videos were deleted, hidden, or unlisted. So we have this total number of views, but we know that some of it is deleted. So the way that I ended up backtracking was going to Social Blade and seeing what percentage of the views ended up disappearing. Looking at the numbers of the 11 million views that are public right now from the last 30 days, 5.6 million views were hidden. So in order to fix the numbers to make sure that they're accurate based off what we're seeing, we need to increase the numbers by 50.3%. So of 18.9 million stimulus related views, doing the math times it by 50.3% increase, that's going to be 28.5 million stimulus related views. 
And just in case Brian from Clear Value Tax wants to audit my work and wants to look at my spreadsheet, feel free to contact me and I'll share a copy of this with you. Maybe I'm weird, but I feel like most accounting and finance people really like to play with spreadsheets. So 28.5 million views times 55%, which is what the creator gets, times 8 CPM and 12.8 CPM. That's going to get us $126,000 to $200,000. And again, this is going to be adjusted for the deleted videos, and this isn't accounting for stuff like brokerage deals and other promotions that he might be doing. Same thing with all of these other creators. Side note, if you have not liked the video yet, give it a thumbs up. With that said, let's move into part number two, which is going to be why you should start a channel. So I know some people are going to argue that only CPA should talk about this, but I feel like that's not really that fair. With technology, with places like YouTube, the main point of it is that it allows people, normal people, to share their opinion and their perspective. A lot of people are dealing with this differently. If you go down to Texas, it's pretty much business as usual right now, but in the Bay Area and San Francisco, everything is still mostly shut down. A lot of these channels had zero or maybe a few hundred subs a few months ago or even a few weeks ago, but right now they have 30,000, 50,000, and maybe 100,000 subs. All you really need nowadays is a phone to get started. You don't even need a fancy camera. This sounds like an ad for YouTube, but the main takeaway is that there are probably a ton of you who are smarter than me and who are more interesting than me who don't have a channel. Take a shot and see what happens. As long as you're not starting an OnlyFans account, that's probably not going to affect you in the long term. I don't think your employers are going to look back and be like, oh, you talked about the stimulus bill and you analyzed it and see who was eligible. They're not going to not hire you because of that. Side note, if you want to sign up for my OnlyFans account, they're going to think you're serious. It's obviously a joke. The final thing we're going to do is to look at some of these channels and see where the opportunity is and some of the weaknesses. Pretty much doing a SWOT analysis, so strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. For the new channels that have grown a lot recently, who maybe were struggling beforehand, I think you have a very good strength in that people who watch you trust you. The big weakness is they might not end up following you to the topics that you're interested in. So for example, if you're someone who was previously doing credit cards and you were doing a lot of stimulus stuff and you moved back into credit cards, that's going to be a big risk. The opportunity though is that there are going to likely be other products that they're interested in, whether that's bank accounts, whether that's going to be loans. There's just a lot of things that you can talk about and review it and give it your opinion. It is this weird ground where if they are only interested in the stimulus stuff, that's a big problem. But if they're interested in you, then you have a huge opportunity. For the creators that have been around before who had channels already, and I've talked to Brian Jung about this, and this is pretty much towards him. So pretty much the same things that we talked about for the other channels, but half of his subscribers were from credit cards, and then the other half was from stimulus videos. So the big question is how much overlap is there between these two audiences, or is there no overlap at all? I think the big opportunity is going to be becoming the next Graham, so he can actually do a lot of different topics, and if people like it, then that's pretty good. The big threat is if he flip-flops between these two audiences, so credit card, stimulus, credit card, stimulus, then he might end up losing both audiences. My recommendation without looking at any of the data that he has that he probably analyzes himself is going to be becoming a general channel because I think there's a lot more opportunity there. For the established channels, this is just one of many topics and it's probably not really going to change things. So for Credit Shifu, for Ask Sebi, we're probably going to go back to credit card stuff. Graham is going to keep covering general topics based off what's in the news. Andre is probably going to go back to more dividend stuff as we keep moving forwards, especially if there are buying opportunities. And Kevin is probably going to talk about real estate again. It's kind of like when credit cards were cool and people were talking about how to do trips with them. Other people were doing those as well, even though they weren't credit card creators, just because it was a logical topic. The last one we're going to talk about is Clear Value Tax, who seems pretty smart about this because he already probably analyzed the same information and realized that he does need to pivot and build out a community elsewhere. It looks like he's mostly focused on investing apps, which I think makes sense, as well as crypto, which I think is a bit weird, but we'll see what happens. I think he could easily become another gram if he wanted to. With that said, my question for you guys is, are you surprised by any of these numbers? Also, in case you're wondering, this is going to be more of a behind the scenes look at YouTube, how money's made, stuff like that. Stuff that doesn't really fit into Ask Sebi that people still ask me about either as a creator or as a viewer. If you are interested in stuff like that, let me know down below what topics you're interested in. Ones that we have in mind right now are going to be the economics of t-shirts, economics of private jets, especially for creators who are trying to flex and whether that's ethical and a few other topics. 
If that sounds interesting, then subscribe to the channel, but otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.